Transporting guide dogs. What do taxi and rideshare drivers need to know? Logo for CNIB Guide Dogs. Introduction. Hi, I'm Diane Bergeron, president of CNIB Guide Dogs. We're standing today outside of the kennel that we have in Carleton Place, just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. This is called the Canine Campus, and this is where all the action happens with the CNIB Guide Dog Program. We can house approximately 25 dogs in our kennel, and they are treated like they are in a palace. With me today, my co-host, as it were, in this training video is Carla. Carla is a two-year-old golden retriever, and she is my guide dog. We trained together in October of last year, and we have been working very well together since then. Today we want to talk about access rights for guide dogs and how you as a driver and assistant to somebody with sight loss can help when you are serving people with disabilities in your vehicles. First and foremost, I want to tell you about CNIB Guide Dogs. CNIB has been around for over a hundred years. We've been serving people with sight loss for that entire time, providing assistance with orientation and mobility, independent living skills, library services, and various other support systems. Now we're doing a program called Guide Dogs. We train dogs by, with professional guide dog mobility instructors, people who have gone through a three-year apprentice program to learn exactly what they need to do to train these dogs to be professionals in the field. About guide dogs. So people who are blind or partially sighted need assistance to get around. We use sighted guide, we use white cane, and we use the dogs. You will find that you will end up with people that are require all of these types of mobility aids when you're serving people with sight loss in your transportation. So first I want to talk about the differences between the three types of mobility. A sighted guide is when you are providing somebody with your arm, they hold your elbow, and they walk along beside you just a step behind you. That is one form of mobility for someone who is blind. Someone who uses a cane will use a long white cane that what they will use tapping it back and forth or trailing alongside a building or the edge of a curb. And that is an object finder. A white cane will help you help a blind person find stairs, doors, the edges of buildings, and so on, and help us to get around. Then there's my preference, which is a guide dog. Sit. A guide dog is an object avoider as well as an object finder. It is Carla's job to keep me safe and to take care of me when I'm out in public. Carla will guide me around obstacles, protect me from stepping out into traffic, and she'll also find things like doors and stairs and chairs and elevators. So she's a very good helper for someone who's blind or partially sighted. In Canada, every province and territory has pieces of legislation that protect people who are blind or partially sighted with the right to have their guide dog with them. It's important to realize that the dog itself does not have the right to access a, t a public space. It is my right as a person who is blind to be accompanied by my dog. It is a human right in this case, not an animal right. Okay, so how to identify a guide dog? Guide dogs are very easy to identify because they wear this thing that is on her back called a harness. You will see other service animals and sometimes dogs that are puppies that wear a vest. That is um, for other types of service animals and for puppies in, in uh, being raised and when they're young. But you can tell the difference with a trained guide dog because they have the handle attached. So this handle is what's gonna use, uh, show you the difference between a service dog for something else and a guide dog. It's also the tool that the dog and I use for communication. So when I want the dog to do something, then I hold the handle and she guides me and I can give her a command, such as Carla, forward. And then she'll start to walk. She will take me with her and I will follow the handle. That's how she communicates with me. Good girl, Carla sit. Well done. When you're working with somebody with a guide dog, it's very important to understand that there is an etiquette, a guide dog etiquette. This dog is a very well-trained dog. She's been trained for a couple of years up to this point to get her ready for me. It's extremely important to know that when the dog has got the harness on, 
She is working and should never be interfered with or distracted. She has my life in her hands and she needs to focus on making sure that I'm safe, not focus on looking at a person who's trying to pet her, feed her, or talk to, talk to her. Okay. So very important when you're driving somebody who has a guide dog, please do not interfere with the dog or make eye contact with the dog. She is a professional and needs to be treated as such. Guide dogs are professionally trained to behave themselves. They should be at all times sitting quietly and they will not be bouncing around your vehicle. It is extremely important that we remember that they are trained professionals. They are not just pets. So you can expect them to act as a trained professional. Now we would like to show you exactly how this works. To help me today, we have Ben Francis, who is one of our guide dog mobility instructors at CNIB Guide Dogs. He is going to pretend to be my driver, and we're going to show you the best placement for the dog, how we help someone who is blind or partially sighted, and how this whole process works. Picking up the customer. When picking up a blind or partially sighted person with a guide dog, identify yourself once you arrive. Ask how you can help describe the vehicle you're driving and help the person to the vehicle door if necessary. Ask the person if they would prefer to sit in the front or the back of the vehicle and adjust seat positions if necessary to allow for extra foot space for the dog. Hello Diane, it's Ben here. I'm your driver today. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. How can I help you? Um, I'll just have my dog follow you if you just make sure we don't uh, disappear. Absolutely. Follow me. Okay. I'm bringing you to the passenger side of the, of the car. It's a small SUV and it's pointing to the right. Um, would you like to get into the front or the back? Uh, the back, please. Okay, let me get the door for you. Thank you. It's opening out to the right. Perfect. I'm going to slide the front seat forward for you, okay? So you've got a little bit more room. Perfect, thank you so much. You're okay. Perfect. Diane sits in the back of the car with her guide dog Carla at her feet. Yeah. Okay, and where would you like to sit, Diane? Uh, in the front, please. Absolutely. Let me just slide the seat back for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, the doors open out to the right. Once the person and the dog are inside the vehicle, be sure that the dog's feet and tail is completely inside before closing the door. Carla, sit. Sit down. That's it. Watch the tail. All right. Good girl. While in transit, guide dogs should remain on the floor and not interact with the driver. Some guide dogs may rest their head on an armrest. It is okay to let the passenger know if you are not comfortable with this during the ride. While traveling, giving important route information along the way can be helpful, such as expected delays or detours. When arriving at the destination, ask how you can be of assistance and explain where you have stopped the vehicle in relation to their destination, for example, in a driveway or on the street. Exiting the vehicle. And we're here. Let me get the door for you. Okay, Diane, we're just in front of the building. Would you like me to accompany you to the door? Oh, that would be great if you wouldn't mind. Okay, let's go. Good girl. Okay, let me just shut the door and come on straight ahead. Wonderful. No cleanup fees. Cleanup fees cannot be charged to a passenger with a guide dog. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn today about the importance of guide dogs for people who are blind or partially sighted. For more information, go to cnibguidedogs.ca. Thank you.
A photo of Diane Bergeron, president of CNIB Guide Dogs, and Ben Francis, Guide Dog Mobility Instructor. The logo for CNIB Guide Dogs, along with the URL dnibguidedogs.ca.